Scotty here with a Black Talk Radio News commentary. And on this particular commentary, I just want to briefly go over some things about uh, Mark Lamont Hill's commentary on mediocre Negroes, talking about these black men, Jim Brown, uh, Steve Harvey, Martin Luther King the third. Uh, as you can see, his father's picture there, and we'll talk about him in just a bit. But Mark Lamont Hill, why on the white propaganda network, CNN, called these men mediocre Negroes simply for meeting with Donald Trump. Now, first thing is name calling. Uh, this is something that I am working on with myself. People make you angry and you want to call them out their name. That's that's a common response, but we want to try to grow um, as we uh, have more time on this earth, and so I'm trying to grow. And when Mr. Neely Fuller, a counter-racist author, put in his 10 stop, stop name-calling people, you know, this really kind of brings that home for me, seeing Mark Lamont Hill on white people's platforms calling other black people mediocre Negroes for simply meeting with another white person, and yes, he appears to be a racist, has said racist things, and um, just uh, has practiced racism in the past against black people. And I'm talking about Donald J. Trump. Um, but let's take a look at these individuals that I have in these pictures. If meeting with white people or white racists it makes you a mediocre Negro, then as you can see, I got four right here that I like to ask Mark Lamont Hill about does he consider Elijah Muhammad the founder of the Nation of Islam a mediocre Negro for uh, setting up meetings with the Klan with the American Nazi Party um, if you go and check the record you will find that Elijah Muhammad um, had this meeting in Atlanta uh, with a group of American Nazis that he had had invited to a rally that was being held in Atlanta. Um, it was in the 1960s. I'm sorry I don't have the exact date uh, up in front of me. Oh, well, actually, I do. Let me go ahead and pull up that information. I can give you that information. Let me see. That would be in uh, what date? Uh, June 25th, 1961. Ten members of the American Nazi Party arrived at a Nation of Islam rally in Washington, D.C. on the invitation of Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad the party's co-founder, I'm, again, I'm talking about now the American Nazi Party, uh, George Lincoln Rockwell led them inside the arena. They were given front row seats right in the center. Um, I believe Elijah Muhammad was supposed to speak, but he was ill and he sent Malcolm to speak instead. But six months prior to that, um, Elijah sent Malcolm in a secret meeting uh, to an Atlanta-based Klan group, and they came up with some kind of truce that the Klan wouldn't attack uh, any mosque belonging to the Nation of Islam, and, and likewise, there would not be any counter-violence uh, towards them. Um, I also came across a... a a historical note and I have to do more research on that but I also have read that uh, the NOI had met with the Klan to assist, get assistance in purchasing land so um, so there we have Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad meeting with white racists in June of 1922 we have Marcus Garvey having a secret meeting with Edward Young Clark who was a KKK leader a white racist so um i've given you three men who are prominent in the black nationalist uh history here in the united states who have all met with white men white racists uh whatever you want to call it called uh label them so last but not least we have mlk we have martin luther king jr and while he did not that I have come across in a historical record meet with any Klan members or Nazi party or anything like that, he did have a meeting with Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, once he became president. He also had a meeting with uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, who was the president, Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, both of these men practice racism. Um, he met with them to do what? To advocate for black people's rights. 
And Lyndon Baines Johnson, he became president. He was from Texas. This man, you know he was a white supremacist. And he met with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, to discuss the Voting Rights Act and, and, and um, other civil rights issues. And so he was the POTUS at the time, the president of the United States at the time. And so uh, regardless, it's no different than Donald Trump meeting with any of these other people, um, black men that he met with uh, prior to his inauguration. And as a final commentary on that, um, I don't see what would, let me put it this way, what would Mark Lamont Hill say about black people who met with Hillary Clinton? Isn't she a white racist too? Hasn't she engaged in white supremacy? And so I suspect that you have black people who are Democrats, who are who are helping liberals and and not so much, you know, got black people at the center of their concern, uh, but they are more concerned about uh, making Republicans look bad, which, you know, you don't have to make them look bad. Policy stands for itself. But I just suspect that this is a psychological operation as I see all of these people, not even considering the fact that Hillary Clinton is a racist. All right, y'all can live in denial all you want to. The record speaks for itself. And uh, speaking of the former, well, I want to bring up the former CEO of USA Inc., Barack Obama. I heard Al Sharpton talk about uh, going to sporting events with him, uh, eating Christmas dinner up in the White House with the Obamas. And for all the black people that met with Barack Obama while he was president of the United States, incorporated um what did they get out of those meetings what did they talk about what did al sharpton and them talk about and so it did not result having access to a black president and i'm just saying that because that's what most people refer to him as in the black community he has rejected that label he's the president or was the president of Americans, not black Americans, not white. So, but anyway, what did we get from his administration despite all these black people partying, partying in the White House, you know, watching movies in the White House, eating Christmas dinners on the White House? What, what, what did we get from them? So anyway, just temper your criticism. I do agree with Mr. Fuller. We shouldn't engage in name calling. Nobody is above criticism, but let our criticism be constructive. Let it be logical. Let it be fact-based. And let's not let it be based on emotional emotions. This is Scotty Reed with a Black Talk Radio news commentary. Uh, you can find more commentary and other great content produced by other people at blacktalkradionetwork.com. <laughs>